This video is five things that will make you a happier business owner. I promise it's gonna be worth it, so let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey, I'm a wedding invitation designer, and I love to teach people how to start run and grow successful creative businesses. I have so many resources here on my channel, as well as on my website. If you are interested in becoming a stationary designer, check out our membership stationary school. And while you're here, like, subscribe, watch all of our videos about running a happy and successful business on your own terms. That's really important to me. So I think we're in this business to enjoy ourselves. We escaped from capitalism to some extent to get out of the corporate world and have a good time. So if you're not having a good time with this business, then it's time for something to change. My business over the last eight years has changed so much. And so has my mindset around it uh, because it has to, you can't do the first year struggle forever. You can't be as stressed about every single order forever. So this will be five tips that'll make you a happier business owner. And I hope that you enjoy them because that's the whole point of this. All right, the first tip I have for you is to let go of the idea of being perfect. So I'm an invitation designer. And when I'm looking at a design about to send it to a client, I could fuss about a font for 10 years and still not feel like it's perfect. And I could find that perfect one after 10 years, send it to the client and they say, oh, I don't like this. I want to change it to something that I think is really ugly. That's just how it goes in business. So I've let go of the idea that anything needs to be perfect and I've settled on kind of 90, 95%. So once you get to a point where you're happy with something, it's a good working point. I mean, that's the whole point of a design proof is we're starting here and then we're working towards the perfect end point. But the perfect end point for your client is not necessarily going to be the same as it is for you anyway. So we got to let go of the idea of that perfection because it's going to save you so much time and stress in the long run. We also need to let go of perfection when it comes to like your website, posting on Instagram, making a TikTok video, etc. because Honestly, in those cases, done is so much better than perfect. If you can get to 80, 90% of the way there, I promise a single typo or a slightly lower quality video or something is not going to change the outcome of your business. So we can let go of some of those little stresses and just that five to 10 extra percent of perfection. I promise you're gonna be so much happier and more successful. Okay, the second thing I do is get clear on what my red and green flags are for clients or people that I want to work with and look really hard for those. And I try not to ignore those because of I'm desperate for this project, the project sounds cool, um, the wedding planner is great and I wanna work with them, et cetera. The client is not going to change after you book. So whatever they're showing you is what they're going to continue to show you throughout the process. And same goes for you. You're not gonna change after they book. So whatever you're showing them is what you're gonna continue to show them throughout the process. If you're already feeling annoyed with them, if they already are penny pitching or being really particular or not having any idea what they want, that's gonna continue throughout the process. The more that you can accept that and accept who they are at face value and not expect them to change, the happier you're going to be. So say no to those red flags, say a huge resounding yes to those green flags um, and try to notice them more and more as you have more and more clients. Number three, kind of related is just taking the emotion out of your business. This is like the hardest one of all because we're in this fully, we're so 100% invested in this that it's impossible to not be emotional about it. But if you're responding to a client and you feel really emotional, take a step back. If you're sending over a quote and you're thinking, gosh, I would never pay this much for wedding invitations. Why would anyone do that? Take the emotion out of it. Are your numbers good? Did you get them from a mathematical place, the math is not gonna lie to you. It's just your emotions and how you feel about that quote and your value um, that are clouding your judgment. When you're dealing with difficult client issues, it's really hard to take the emotion out of those as well. Uh, but if you can not focus on blame, whose fault it is, how you feel, getting feeling personally attacked by them, personally victimized by Regina George, if you can take some of that emotion out of it, then you're going to get to a resolution a lot sooner. You're gonna make your clients uh, happier. You're gonna seem more professional as well. And you're gonna be able to move on from that situation sooner, which is really what we need in the long run. It might still make you feel emotional years later, uh, but if you don't act on that emotion, you're going to be able to move on from it quicker. My fourth tip is just, I pay more for things than I used to when I started. I was stressed about a $20 a month expense when I started. And now I pay my video editor, for instance, like $800 a month and it's no big deal. This is a hard concept to get behind, but you have to start to understand the things that you are not good at, the things that are taking too much of your time and the things that are worth paying more. I promise that 
when you're getting the right people for these jobs, it's going to be worth paying more. And the time you spend kind of shopping around, trying to find a free solution for something, there's a reason it's free. And that's because it's not as good or it's not the right person for the job. Getting the right people for the job is always going to be worth it. I'm not necessarily saying this will start immediately and that you should invest in huge, massive things when you're just starting out. But as you move forward, it's going to make you a happier business owner to invest in the right things and to pay for the things that are worth it, not to spend your time on. Another great example of this is accounting and bookkeeping. Um, the amount that you spend on these things should be really, really easy to justify because you don't want to have tax mistakes. I promise as someone who's made a few, I promise. And my fifth tip, this is going to be the most freeing for you, which is just saying no to more things. The more you work, the more you're going to find out the things that really bring you joy and the things that really bring you down or you hate doing, or they always cost so much, or you always avoid doing them. Um, all of these things are signs that it's just not the right thing for you. And the more comfortable you can get saying no to that and just understanding that you don't have to be everything for everyone. You don't have to say yes to everything that a client asks you, uh, the more happy you're going to be in your business. You're going to get to say yes to more of those green flag clients. You're going to, need to say no to those red flag clients. You're going to, to say no to any project that just doesn't feel right. And I know that sounds so scary when you're starting off. I'm not saying that every project I've ever done has been wonderful. I definitely said yes to things that I shouldn't have in the past because I was desperate for money, desperate for clients, um, or just trying to appease someone because I let emotion get in the way of it. So this is really bringing back like all the other tips I've said before. Uh, but the more that you can say no to things, I promise it just feels better and better every single time you do it. So start doing that. Think of something that you absolutely hate doing and either charge a ton for it or start saying no to it. Um, and let me know how it feels. Overall, I hope you're in this business to enjoy it and I hope you're able to start enjoying it. If you're not feeling like you're enjoying it right now, try some of these tips and see if they improve how you feel about your business. If you overall aren't loving your business, then it's definitely time for a change because we're not in this to be miserable. If we wanted to be miserable, we would go and do whatever it was we were doing before we started this business that made us miserable enough <laughs> to start the business in the first place. Um, I promise that you can still be extremely successful and enjoy the things that you're doing. Not every day is going to be perfect and happy and bubbly, but in general, you should be enjoying this or it might be time for a mindset shift. So let me know how you're feeling about your business. Let me know if any of these tips were helpful. And while you're here, I hope you'll like subscribe and watch some of the other videos on our channel about running a successful creative business. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.